Let's see, can I hear you? Am I muted? Whoa. <laughs> Here, my friend. Uh, Are you doing, Marco? I'm doing. What about you? Doing, doing. You're very clean cut. Very clean cut. It's good. It's a good look. Yeah. <laughs> I I made it a couple of weeks ago. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I made see. you more shaggy. <laughs> more shaggy. Like <laughs> That's good. What are you doing there? Uh, behind you, uh, Seattle? Uh no, it's um okay. It's really funny. That's actually Las Vegas, and it's a commission. It's not something I would choose to do on my own. Um, but it's a, it, I, I'm being paid pretty well for it. So I, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying my best. It's been kind of a struggle because it's not subject matter. I would generally, you know, do on my own and I'm trying not uh -huh. to put too much of myself into it, um, to, you know, cause it will make it way too different. It's also funny because I was talking about postmodernism a lot and it's, mm. uh, Las Vegas is like the. It's like the the mecca of post. I mean, not post only mecca, it's like it's like what inspired postmodernism, basically, right? Mm. You know about that book, uh, uh, Learning from Las Vegas. It's a really important book in the history of postmodernism in in architecture and art. I should say I should make that clear distinction. Okay, I never heard about Las Vegas in uh, this kind of topics, but of course I I never was well, I I was never uh into architecture yeah so quite legit i'm gonna rise you up a little bit oh yeah yeah sure sure um, <clears throat> let me see i can also try to I, where we're, where okay got a box here we go <laughs> better nice uh, even let, for me, my um, man. let me also pull up your portfolio that you sent. I want to pull that up here too. Do, oh, you, do, you have a, do you have a deadline for um, the ending of your painting? Uh, no, it should have been done months ago, honestly, but I got super <laughs> sidetracked. And the, and the people commissioning it didn't ask me, they didn't tell me I had to have a deadline, so I okay no I rush to, uh i worked on it a lot and then i just sort of it just sort of sat there for a few months mm -hmm. so i'm just i'm just starting to like i like i really want to get it out of the way so that i can move on to other things oh what am i looking for here let's see there's that i want to see those questions there that I have. there we go all right so i'll pull up the questions and i got your portfolio there all right well <clears throat> maybe <clears throat> This can be the official start. So I'll, I'll just cut off, you know, the, the previous part and we can start here. As you want. <laughs> All right. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, whoever happens to be watching this. Yeah, I got to stop this stupid hairstyle. I look like that guy from Star Wars, the Anakin's. Uh, much more sexier. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can really do with it to make it look good these days. So I just... I just let it be what it is. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah. All right. We're talking today to Marco. Let me see if I pronounce your last name correctly. Giraldi. I can't say the G. No, it's Giraldi, right? Giraldi. Gilardi. Huh? Gilardi with L. Gilardi. I always get confused from between the G-L-I, which is a different word. It's a sound we don't have in English. Ah, uh, really? Yeah, we don't have that no. sound. The guinea. Gu guinea pig. No, no, we have that sound. I said I get confused between that sound and the G-L-I. You know the G-L-I, that's like... Ah, okay, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You guys, yeah. your fancy spelling, you're so confusing. No, I know this shows what a bad friend I am, that I don't know how to pronounce my, my friend's last name. It's been years. Every it time that matter. I have to pronounce your name, I just have... It's Marco <laughs> it doesn't Gilardi. matter. Gilardi, così. That's it. Gilardi, Marco Gilardi, and um, <laughs> I always like to just call you Tombo, your nickname. Which. Uh, That's it. And do you remember what? Uh, what's the meaning of Tombo? It's butterfly in Japanese, right? That's it. Uh, 
Yeah. You're yeah. a good friend. Oh, wait, but, oh, wait, I said butterfly. It's, it's dragonfly. It's dragonfly. Dragon, yeah, dragonfly. All right. Um, so I'll, 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 I'll talk a little bit about, um, uh, you know, where, like our history. I met, I met Marco in, was it 2012? It must've been 2012. And that's oh God, it. That's almost 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> in an, in another place that I won't say properly, the, uh, La Academia di Belli, Belli Arti, Belle Arti. Mm -hmm. oh my God, my Italian's gotten so bad over the years. I don't have anyone to practice with. It, even my English, don't worry. You think so? Uh, I don't <laughs> I think your English was always better than my Italian. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we were both studying at, how could I call that in English? The Academy? But there's also an Academy, a Florence Art Academy. So <laughs> it's L'Academia. We were both studying at L'Academia for um, like uh, 2012, 2013 uh, under Adriano Bimbi, right? <laughs> <laughs> And, what a uh, man, what a man. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to talk about him a little bit. I think we have different, I think we have different um, uh, 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 feelings about him. You know, uh, mine are mostly positive. You, you stayed with him for longer. Maybe it's a, mm. sort of a different relationship. Um, what was I going to say? Ba, 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 ba. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the, I keep, I keep, I always feel stupid if I pronounce a word with an Italian accent in the middle of an English sentence because I can't switch back and forth easily. It's like one or the other, you know? So I <laughs> yeah. want to find a way to refer to La Calamia without an Italian accent. So I'm just going to call it uh, the... The, uh, the Academy. The Academy. I'm just going to call it the Academy. Not to be confused with the Florence Art Academy, which is like an American school. I think that's all super fancy and, and only does like you know, very realistic sort of uh, artworks. Did you yeah, ever... actually, actually, Academy are pretty, pretty funky. The, the, the one I just was talking about or the... Yes, the yeah. Italian ones. Oh, the Italian ones. Did you ever encounter the students or the school, the one that I was talking about, the American one that's called the Florence Art Academy? I think it's called the Florence Art Academy. Look it up yes, and actually, I also worked for them for a semester. What no. did you do for them? Model. No Modeling. way. All right. <laughs> All right. Wow. The winter semester, I, 2016-17, I, or, or the year after, I'm pretty sure uh, winter semester between 2016 and 17. Right. Right. Wow. How was that? What was what, that like? Being a what a, mm, what a weird place. Yeah. Uh, Mm. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to talk bad about this kind of a play, about that place, even though because I did not explore, I did not get inside it so much. I was just a, I was just a passenger. But the vibe I felt, uh, the people who, who I talk with, mm. uh, didn't didn't like me so much uh, well they didn't I, like you or I, you didn't like them i i did i didn't like them yes because uh, everything was i, I felt this um uh, vibe of clo um, closed well, vibe yeah. yes closed vibe um all, all the students very very si silent, very, um, yeah, um, but doesn't matter. And I remember they, uh, one thing I really appreciate was uh, they were very, it was very, how can I say, they were very military. So work, 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 work. They worked so hard. <laughs> Having a lot of um, lot of exercise, very hard, a lot and hard exercise. Yes, right. technically, it it could be a very interesting uh, place, but uh, um, for the contents, well, the contents are prat practically are does not exist. Yeah. It's just it's just technique, just uh, yeah. 
uh, le learn how to um, how to sculpt how to sculpt how to render basically how to render okay how to sculpt how, how to draw how to paint uh, like in the like in the 18th century yeah. stop right so so we we there's a word for that um that style of art education uh, mm. that they call it an atelier uh, an atelier. atelier is like it's a french word i think and uh, yes. it's that, that this is like um the uh, studio yeah 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 basically basically um but the, but it's it's become it's come into the vocabulary of in in contemporary times as something to distinguish the style of art education where they're just teaching you these sort of like classical what they would call classical sort of european mm -hmm. styles like pre you know before 1900 sort of styles uh versus what we get in most art schools which is you know, very centered around contemporary practices. It might pull in a little bit of classical stuff, but it's usually pretty centered on, um, you know, this very wide and diverse sort of like uh, practices of, of, of contemporary art today. So mm -hmm. the ironic thing, and I'll, I'll tell this for the whoever, whoever is watching this casual conversation between friends. <laughs> the ironic thing about the, let, let's, again, I want to, I don't want to say it in Italian because I just feel like I'm, I make a fool of myself every time, but let's call it like the academy, the, the academy that we went to. Mm -hmm. um, it is, if I'm not mistaken, you can tell me, the oldest art school in Europe or close to? It is. It is. Not only in Europe, in the whole world. And the, okay. And, <laughs> and yet, and yet, uh, having, oh, and a little historical footnote. This, I believe, it was started by a pupil of Michelangelo. It's, it's ultimate origin, right? Maybe not necessarily that location, but. It, it was established by Vasari. 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 The great Vasari, the guy who invented art history basically <laughs> unless we are going to say gu there's a guy the named first, uh, the first uh, uh, artist biographer of the history yeah. now in western history i i found out there's one in chinese history whose name is gu mm -hmm. i can't pronounce his name but there's a chinese one of course we're eurocentric and we don't talk about them but <laughs> but anyway <clears throat> what was i going to say i was going to say that okay so basically you and me are here in this um very old oh they're all old buildings in florence but we're in this uh, art school that's been there for a long time. It started like, you know, 400 years ago, 500 years ago, whatever it was. Um, and yet, the, the academy that we went to was very focused, I would say, on contemporary art. Can't get away from the past because you're in Florence. You're in the middle of the Renaissance. You can't get it. It's all around you. We're, you know, there's these statues and everything all around. It's the, the presence of the past is so there. But yes. the teachers and the emphasis, they're very focused on contemporary art. Whereas a, a place like, and I just looked it up, the, the American school, I think it's American anyway, it's, it's called the Florence Academy of Art. Um, mm -hmm. so that's, you know, yeah, that school is super duper focused on classical, style, you know, classical European art. And uh, it's, it's really funny, for me, it was really funny, that um, contrast. And um, I don't know, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, in my opinion, in the academy in Firenze, um, we found we found out um, a contemporary uh, reality, but I can say it it was not so much contemporary because, for example, the academy here in Bologna, for example, or maybe uh, Brera, the Milano's academy. Uh -huh they are much, much more focused and involved into contemporary art. Right. In Firenze, yes, someone tried, but this, the, the spirit, the past spirit, it's, it's too much... Um, inescapable. <laughs> it, yes, it's an inescapable. It's too much into the, um, the culture. Yeah. It's very difficult to, to get away with it. Even though in Tuscany, in Tuscany, there are some very important and big reality for contemporary art. For example, I suggest you to search, search for this. Galleria Continua in San Gimignano, very nice place. 
and also um, Pecci Museum. Museum how do I, how, 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 do I, how do I say that? Galleria. There are. Can I can I write it in this? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just put it in the chat. I'll, okay. I'll okay. Galleria. Mignano. I went yeah. to San Gimignano once. It was a beautiful, beautiful little city. Little yes. Town. I don't know. Do, do you remember it? Oh, yeah, yeah. With all the tall towers, right? Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. The beautiful. city, the city of towers. All right. Let's see, let's see. Continua. That's interesting. Um, well, if I can pull it up here, maybe I can share it. Well, I used to, um, I did a, a, a fun conversation with one of my friends um, using Zoom and I would share like my screen. I, uh, mm -hmm. I would share just like what's on my, my desktop. And my wife was telling me that, that that's very non-professional. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but uh, maybe I can just share just this thing. Let me, let me see if I can just share the document. Uh, anyway, my, my desktop is a, a un casino adesso. <laughs> Also mine. Yeah, really. <laughs> All right. So, uh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. All right. I can see. Oh, you can you see it? Can you see what I'm looking at? Yes. Okay, you can see it too. So this is the this is a contemporary art gallery in San Gimignano. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So so are so are you saying that if you're in Italy and you want to study contemporary art, you know, mm -hmm. a place like this. Or, or Milan. Well, oh, yes, if someone wants to approach uh, contemporary art, of course, the, um, the center, the, the capital of everything practically is Milano. But maybe you remember, personally, I, I really don't like Milano. <laughs> I don't remember that, but I, I, yes. it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> really? Why? Because you're from the north, you're from Bergamo, and so yes. you know, I think people just don't appreciate the places they're from. That's, that's, <laughs> this has been my, this has been what I see. People never like where they're from. Well, sometimes they do. <laughs> it's interesting, right? Why some people love. It, it's a, it's like a good them. thought. It's a what? good thought. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, Milan is a metropolis, one of the, one of the few metropolis in Italy. Mm. With uh, Roma, Torino, Milano, right, right, right. practically, maybe Napoli, maybe I don't, I don't know. Well, what 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 qualifies as a metropolis for you? If if Naples is and it's a huge city, yes. But the metropolis has to be something different. I don't even really know in English what metropolis. What diff I just think of it as a big city. No. Ah, really? For, for you, it's a more international. For city? for me, metropolis is. Uh, really a wide city wide city with a lot of people are living it living in it you mean like just spatially wide or like wide in terms of the different cultures or what do you mean mm, basically the wideness just big just big wide. just big but so of course but of course big city uh, automatically became a um multi a multicultural a multicultural place right so you you don't think naples is big enough to be considered in that actually i really don't know i can i cannot say you never been there i've been there yeah, but i was i i was not interested in the into the uh, city parameters i, I was much more interested in uh, in a gastronomical pizza tour. <laughs> <laughs> Naples is famous for its pizza, of course. Um, all right, all right. Wait, well, hold on. I want to. I want to go back to this subject of like yeah. what drew both of us to Florence, right? Because I think it's really interesting. First of all, it's more different for for me. It's a bigger difference going from Southern California to suddenly I'm in Florence. From you going from Bergamont to suddenly you're in Florence is, you know, different, but not as different, right? You've got old buildings and stuff in Bergamont and, you know, Italian architecture and uh, these things. Uh, obviously, it's a bit different, but, you know, I mean, 
I, I'm curious to, I want to talk about what drew me there, but I'm curious, I want to hear then what it was for you that drew you to Florence. Because I'm sure we must have talked about that, but I actually don't remember. For, for me, I mean, I think it's, it's kind of obvious, right? If you're growing up in America, our, our oldest building, especially on the West Coast, which, you know, we didn't even, we didn't even get over here until like the 1800s. You know, our oldest, the oldest building that we have in California is from the Spanish when they colonized and they made the missions. So they made these things called missions to convert the, uh, the Native Americans. And we still have a few of those. They're mostly from the late 1700s. So the oldest we have is like the late 1700s, which, you know, for you guys, it's like Joven. <laughs> yes. But, uh, but um, so for, 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 for one, for me, it's just to go somewhere with a sense of history, with antiquity. If I'm 100% honest, um, I actually was more attracted to the Italy's real ancient past. So like talking about the, the Romans, and um, obviously in South Italy, you have the Greeks. I didn't even really know that the Greeks were such a big, La, La Mania Grecia in, in Southern Italy. I didn't even know mm -hmm. about that until I came to Italy. We did a field trip down there and I saw like the Greek ruins in Southern Italy, which was pretty cool. Obviously, I think I sold the Etruscans short. And obviously right there in, in Florence, you've got the presence of the Etruscans. So, you know, I, I, but, but I mean, like, if I'm 100% honest, like, I might have chosen Rome if Rome had been an option for me to study abroad in. But, like, it was just Florence. It was, like, the only option in the school where I was going. So if I wanted to go to Italy, it was Florence. And I didn't actually have a huge appreciation for the Renaissance. I kind of, like, I was mildly interested in it. I was like, yeah, it's kind of interesting. It is, it is sort of the origin of the modern world that everybody always wants to pinpoint the origin of the modern world. I think it's a really funny, funny thing. I don't know if you noticed it. But I don't think you can argue much that, that the origin of at least, you know, what de developed into the modern Western civilization is Florence, right? That's kind of interesting. What, what about yes. you? What, what are your thoughts on all that? What do you think? Uh, talking about art, there is an, uh, there is an artist, and, uh, and uh, later I'm going to write you down the name. And uh, in Firenze, in the... In the late 90s, he, um, he made an installation, a pub, um, yes, a public installation outside the Uffizi Museum with a, a neon writing. And the, this neon writing said, all the art is contemporary. Mm. And this is a slogan, this is a, this is a punchline. It's so simple, but even so true. And I think it was very, very, very important to expose this writing in Firenze and on the Uffizi's walls. Because uh, what, is, um, what is past, what is contemporary, what is time? Everything is absolutely relative. Renaissance is the ancient of Italy? Of course not. The Roman Empire was the, the, ancient, the ancient time of Italy. It could be, but there is, there is any, in any way, there is a time before another time. Right. Why are we so focused? just on some piece of times like uh, the Roman Empire and Roman Empire was really 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 long yeah. medieval medieval was really really long more or less a thousand years of medieval split it in three eras the high the medium and the low medieval and also Renaissance we consider I think I think we consider them because their, impo their, their importance into, the, into our culture, what we, what we got from them, what's their, how we say, uh, heritage? Mm -hmm. what, what's, a, what's their heritage of the ancient Romans? For example, if all 
in all around Europe, people believe in God. People told the, the, the tank they told. Spanish, French, uh, even, even a little bit of the English. This was just because the Roman Empire who colonized all the world known. Sure. And uh, what's the Renaissance? The, the beginning of modern era, taking back the, the classical from, uh, ah, and just rem and remember, Renaissance is uh, still into medieval in the last, in the last time, last uh, era of medieval, but Renaissance you can't really separate the, the, yeah. the slow evolution. Uh, actually, this was a really great lecture that Bimbi gave. I know you have your feelings about Bimbi. <laughs> we can get into that later. But I, I'm, I, I, I'm really, easy. I'm easy with Bimbi. You do? Okay. I, there was a lecture that he gave where he, he did a reading. I have tried so hard to find this reading. I can never find it. I don't know who it was. Obviously, he's reading in Italian. It's, an, it's a translation, though, I think, of a French author, but I, I, I can never remember. Um, and it was talking, it was, a, it was an author probably, probably from the 1800s talking about how if you go to a gallery of uh, a, a museum and you look at the, or no, he wasn't talking about the museum. He was talking about if you look at a, a book of fashion and you see how the fashion changes through the centuries, right? If you get, if you, if you look at it in a, in a big enough view where you're looking medieval and then there's Renaissance and you, if you're making big jumps, then it looks like the fashion changed a lot, right? Going from the Roman toga to like what we wear today. It's a lot of big jumps. But if you really see every in between, if you really fill it in and you see every single from year to year, the little stylistic changes. Yeah, you it's so graduated. Know, you can never pinpoint where it really changes from this to that. You know what I mean? It's a fascinating, sure. fascinating thing to point out. That's it. It's a good thought. So going back to Renaissance, consider the, the, the cradle of the Western modern culture, taking, uh, taking back some elements from the classical, from the classical Greek, so something was forgotten uh, during the medieval, taking back some not just uh, not just um, not just art, architecture, but also philosophy, especially philosophy. The hu human humanism, humanist. Human, human, humanist. So, what is it? Um, the the human being much more at the center of the universe. The human being as a universe itself. Mm, the, the, the development of science, Leonardo, Michelangelo, um, find out to discover the curiosity to know what we are. And not only, not only us as a human being, but also the nature, what is nature and what, are, what we are in, in regards of nature. And so it started to do, well, of course, this kind of uh, this kind of uh, thoughts uh, brought also to this discover of um, perspective, mm, because start initially from Giotto. Do you remember Giotto? Yeah, I'm not a big was, fan of Giotto. You, you uh -huh. think he, did, he, did, he discovered? I thought it was Brunelleschi. No, no, no. Yes, Brunelleschi yeah. and uh, Leon Battista Alberti. Right, 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 right. I'm gonna write it in the chat. No, no, I know Alberti. Mm -hmm. Okay. And well, Giotto felt something. Okay, he he told himself, okay, I have to, I have to figure out a, a city. I feel there is something that uh, something is wrong, but what is it? And I think, uh, I think Giotto's painting, but also all the medieval paintings uh, referring to um, dimension, archi architecture, 
space is so so fascinating mm. because they are so naive yeah, yeah. It, they are so naive but they were really really serious about it right even though the representation of a human body of also the the dance uh, the dance of death do you know no i don't know that one. Oh, you um, mean the, the memento skull? mori Memento yeah. Mori, yeah, sc uh, skulls and skeletons. If you see the, the anatomy of the skulls and skeletons, they, they are so naive, but they're so fascinating mm. because uh, it's the, per the perception of someone who never, never ever seen a, a true corpse, a true skeleton. And so illegally, people like Leonardo and Michelangelo, they start to, um, to study the, the human body. Um, how you say? Cutting, cutting up, um, se sectioning. Dissecting, dissecting. Dissecting, dissecting corpses. Dissecting. Hmm? In English, eh? dissecting. Dissecting, I see. <laughs> dissecting um, corpses. Um, pulling out, uh, opening up, uh, very gore, but <laughs> even so, they, they were so, so serious, so into these kind of things. And it was, of course, uh, illegal because the body is the temple of the soul. Right. We, must not, we must not mistreat the, the body because it could, it could have some... Uh, uh, some problems, some issues, some issues for the soul of the people. Wait, but hold on, I want to ask you a question. So, so, you know, what you're describing is some of the innovation and invention and, and the, these many, many things that were happening in Florence that makes it a particular place of a very particular interest historically. Mm. And I mean, I think like, you know, no one could disagree that Florence is crucially important historically with the development of, of Western culture. But, but I was curious why you, why you, Marco Tombo, okay, I Gilardi, was, uh, Gilardi. Bravo. <laughs> why you were curious, why, why, you, why, why you I went, why yeah. I went to Firenze, yeah, because first of all, um, I have some uh, family friends, they are inhabitants, true Fiorentini. Oh, okay. And I know, we know them from a long, long, long time. So first time I, first time I went to Firenze, it was when I was 14 years old. I was really, really young. And I always been in love with Firenze. Mm -hmm. I always, uh, I always went, went to visit. I had also um, a group of friends. So I, I always been in love with Firenze. I see. I see. Uh, the vibe, the energy, the people. Yeah. There, there is my, there is uh, my perception. There is my opinion. But I always, <laughs> it could be foolish, I know, but I always found the people living in Firenze really beautiful, yeah. really beautiful, not just. Uh, physically or or how they dress how they looks but i don't know uh, there is a people people get um another vibe another another energy mm -hmm. now when you say that are you talking about uh, anyone living in or are you talking about uh, the the florentines themselves the, the actual florentines yeah. like you said your, your family friends were actual Florentines, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. I'll just make this clarification for anyone who's listening. Yes, of course. And uh, nice question. Oh, I think, for, yeah, first, of all, first of all, the, the inhabitants. But I think uh, people who got into this vibe, uh, little by little, uh, right. can, uh, mm, yeah. can gain uh, this kind of energy. It's, it's like... Uh, it's like go with the flow. It's like um, right. uh, I think I going going into this um, this dimension, this energy. I, I don't want to talk like a 
how can how can uh, how can you know how can you call that kind of people sort of easy going post, post the hippies uh, <laughs> oh yeah yeah yes yeah, they're right. like uh, peace bro laid back yeah, in, in in uh yeah in english we we would say laid back probably laid back, laid back. I don't necessarily like that term, but that's pretty much the only term that really describes what you're saying. I see. Yeah. I don't want I don't wanna talk about this this kind of people, but uh, it was a, it was a feeling. I don't know. What what did you feel about? Well okay, so so the first thing that I mean, that's a big, big question, because there's so much you can feel about Florence and, and my feelings were complicated. But, but, but first, just to talk about, um, again, like I'm thinking if somebody is watching this who's not familiar with uh, like the complexities of like modern Italy, they might not understand that like, you know, the difference between what it means to be an actual Florentine and, and you know, Italians who moved to Florence uh, versus mm -hmm. all the people like me who just went there to live for a year because they're studying or they, they stay, you know, from outside of Italy. And, and that's a that's a really interesting thing. Um, like I was really drawn to, I think I felt what you were describing about the Florentines, and that's why I bring it up. So like the but but then this is really interesting. Cause so the Florentines are the people who lived in Florence from you know the last few centuries, and they've been mm -hmm. there. But then um, in modern history of Italy, Italians are moving all over the place now more than ever, right? So you get more people in Florence from other places in Italy. So for instance, all the Italian friends that I made that year, almost every single one, and I made like a lot of friends, almost every single one came from a different part of Italy. None of them, I, I yeah. made a few Florentine friends just at the very end of the year. I had a few who were actual Florentines, a few who are a little earlier who were from like, um, what's the region of Florence? Not, not Tuscany, but the, the like Comune or you know the, the region outside. That it circles around. Uh, provincia. Yeah, provincia. Yeah, the, the provincia. Pro, pro, province. I don't know. Right, right. And so you know, I'm as a Californian. I'm as a Californian. As a as a Californian. <laughs> uh, if that's a thing. If it, if there's such a thing as being a Californian, it's a very new thing. If there is, it's such a new thing to be a Californian that it's, you barely even feel justified calling yourself a Californian because it's like my, my ancestors have been here for two generations. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and, um, you know, so for me, it was really interesting to feel these people who have very deep roots, literally, mm. in the landscape around Florence, in Florence. Um, but I did also feel that the Florentines and I heard a lot of them talk about this, that they feel kind of sad because their, their unique Florentine dialect, their unique Florentine culture is sort of, you know, just sort of like dissipating into this larger what Florence is today, which is lots of Italians from outside all over the country, lots of stranieri like me from all over the world. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. So that, you know, that was really interesting. That was really interesting to me. But I have to say, I have to say, I love everything, how it turned out. I love the fact that I made friends from all over Italy because I got a little bit of sample, a little sample platter, you know what yeah. I mean, at the buffet where you get a little taste of everything, <laughs> you know. So I got to see people, people from the north, people from the south, people from the middle, and, 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 it, and it was from Sicily, you know what I mean? So it was really, really interesting that way. Um, but man, no, I mean, my feeling coming to Florence, yeah, it's, th th there's just too much to say. I don't want to, I want to take up all the time, but, uh, <laughs> but I, I think that, that most important thing that, what, that drove me, that was, that was the driving interest is what I described, you know, coming from a place where you grow up without any connection to the land, any deep connection to the land, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's, it's just very interesting. I grew up very interested in, in that. No, I remember you. You used to talk about this yeah. back in the days uh, <laughs> about your uh, your feeling maybe a little bit overwhelming of um, of the the deepness of this uh, root of these roots uh, you you felt when you've been uh, here in Italy mm. and. Uh, 
I don't I don't know how how it this kind of um, feel, feeling of belonging. How, I don't know how how much is a strong this feeling all around Italy, but in Toscana it's really 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 strong. Mm. And uh, as you can as you can uh, notice the, as you could notice that people from tu, uh, from Tuscany are very 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 proud of the, of their history their territory their their totally. food totally. everything yes totally. yes i did notice that i definitely noticed that <laughs> but i think maybe for someone this uh, this could sound annoying but i think it's a good i think it's good to have this kind of uh, this kind of pride for uh, mm -hmm for our for the their own origin yeah. their own their own land their own history totally. mm. even because this kind of feeling is one of the best uh, and one of the most uh, powerful engine to keep alive uh, this kind of uh, tradition this kind of history mm. because history fundamentally is what we are right. where are we where are we coming from? Yeah, that's true. That's mm. true. But I think a lot of people don't don't think about that. You know, the, I I do think that modern art, the his, if we look at the history of modern art, modern art is guilty of that. It, it, there was this yeah. very um um what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, hubristic. You know this word hubristic? Hubristic. hubristic. Yes. Wow. This, nice. <laughs> <laughs> we are. We are moderately educated in the new world as well as the old, Marco. <laughs> there's this, there's this um, hubristic view that modern art has that they, you just break with the past. Just break, it's new. We're in the modern times now. We can make buildings that are complete rectangles. We don't need the past, you know what I mean? Yes. And I think, you know, I, I think definitely, if I want to talk about postmodernism, right, maybe, you know, one of the, little tiny good things of postmodernism is is sort of breaking down that idea a bit like um no, no you know but 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 if we want to go farther than where postmodernism went i think it's like what you're saying this moment right here our bodies everything we're surrounded by everything has a history behind it you know like the easel was developed over how i don't have an easel today because i invented the easel there's a idea of an easel that somebody gave me and I'm like, oh, okay, I can make an easel. Is every single thing, even the, 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 the Zoom, even the, the coding that's used to make, the, the, to make this meeting happen, all of that mm -hmm. technology has its roots in the math that the people were doing. Every single thing, not a single development, whether it's organic, whether it's technological or cultural, doesn't have a history behind it. That's kind of what you're saying, right? Also, yes. <laughs> also, also, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that, mm. there's a lot, man. There's a lot to talk about. So, so then, um, so then, how did you find? Oh, even even in southern Italy, this um, this feeling of a belonging, it's so so strong. Oh yeah. Oh, I know. I went there too, and I. Felt you, you could you could notice from a Sicilian, oh, yeah. from a Puglia people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, definitely. Definitely. All over the place. You know. Um. So so let's just I just want to say just another word about l'Accademia di mm -hmm. Belle Arti, um, the the school where we met. Um, I, I want to. I just. I want to kind of get a little more of your take on it. I, I'll talk about it myself a little bit too, because um, I think our we had very different experiences there. You actually went there for how four years? Three, four? How, how many? Three, three and three and a half. Three and a half. So you, I mean, you graduated from that school. I was yes. just there for a year. It was just I was just a, a tourist. And <laughs> a year at least is, is a good amount of time, but. Um, you know, so for me, it was very, you know, I could say exotic, <laughs> exotic, you know, it's very different. Diff and I had studied abroad before. I'd been to other schools. I'd studied in, twice in Europe, in different places, in Ireland for some reason. I don't know why I went to Ireland. <laughs> I do, but it, 
I know uh, it's not a, m maybe a very relevant place to study art, but um, I, I, I studied there. I studied in France. So I'd been to Europe before. I'd studied in many different art schools in the United States, many different ones. And everywhere I went, all over the world, it was all the same. The same crap everywhere. The, the style of education, exactly the same, until I went to this school where I met you hmm. in Florence. That school was different. The style of teaching, everything about it, the ambience, everything about it was different. It's the only place I ever studied all over the world where, uh, I mean, all over, not like I've studied all over, but in many places where I've studied, is the only place where art education had a different vibe. And um, uh, yeah, I don't know. So for me, it was, a, it was definitely a rich experience because mm -hmm. it's sort of disappointing to travel to France and the art education you're getting there is exactly the same that you could get in New York and the same you could get in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. there's no, there's no, people try to pretend like there's differences, but there's not, you know what I mean? So it was cool to actually. Yeah, maybe, I, I don't know why. Uh, and I, I also didn't, uh, didn't know about this, but probably, probably it's just an Anglo-Saxon approach to this kind of subject, but absolutely i cannot say yeah well well uh the what made I'll, I'll say what made everywhere that i ever studied the focus was very very much on uh you know contemporary art being relevant you know hyper focus on that and like we talked about you can't get away from the past in la academia mm. you can't it's there. yeah so much there and even you can tell that a lot of the teachers really want to get away from it. They don't like it. They actually wish maybe they were in a clean building with no, uh, you know, hard edges and clean lines and they could just be completely in the pre like contemporary world. Um, there's almost a rebelling of pushing against it. I, I'm sure not, not, not for everybody. I don't think Bimbi was like that uh, at all. But, um, but, but what I found there with, with Bimbi more than anybody else was a style of art education that reminded me of what it might have been like 100 years ago. Not long, just like the 1920s or something, you know, like the early mm -hmm. 1900s, maybe the late 18, you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, so there was a still like a romanticism oh, that was yes. alive there, you know what I mean? That is yes. completely dead in, 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 in our universe, completely dead. Not even a trace of it left. And it was so vibrant, it was so alive there, uh, an intellectualism, because yes. we have killed Absolutely. intellectualism. In American culture, to be an intellectual is like, it's like, ew, I don't know. <laughs> it's not. But, it, but in yeah. Italy, you know, people are yeah. actually proud of being intelligent. I remember sitting <laughs> in the circle with Bimbi and, 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 and everybody, you know, and, and, and a student like you or Gemma speaking up and, and the other students are like listening and, and the student who's speaking, you know, they're not trying to like pretend like that. They're not trying to hide their light. You know, they're, 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 uh -huh. it's, it's just a whole different thing. I don't, I don't know. So you say in the, in the American art schools, there is not a, a moment of um, confrontation between students and the teachers. Uh, a moment of a confrontation yes a moment of mm, of de debate debating uh, yes. talking sure sure there is but it's what i'm trying to say is that when it happens people are not pe the style it's a, the style of self expression so in italy mm. uh, i was impressed that the students were not were not embarrassed to speak intelligently. They were not embarrassed to, to, to want to be perceived as being intelligent. In America, there's a heavy stigma against wanting to be perceived like you're too smart or too intellectual. And this is something that you probably <laughs> never experienced. Yeah, you know, absolutely, I mean, yes. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, we value stupidity. It's like, a, it's like a, like stupid, like, no, we literally do. Like this is part of our culture. It's like, stupidity is like stupidity is honest or stupidity is like and it's not even a left or right thing they're both they're both on there's a left version and a right version of this you know what i mean it's it's really it's really interesting yeah <laughs> this is, 
Wow. <laughs> I I'd like to experience. I'd I'd like to experience it, and I'd like to yes, absolutely. Yeah. Come on, come on over. Wow. <laughs> do a semester here. <laughs> but it, it, it depends. But what you mean to talk talking seriously, talking intellectual, talking intelligent? Um, of course, there are also some uh, hipsters uh, acting. Uh, smarter than the others but actually they are not yeah, right. the point is um, talking easily talking sincerely that's uh, i think this is the this is the point it's not a matter of uh, articulated words uh, or um, sophisticated uh, brain race brain masturbation <laughs> it's just talking just talking clearly and sincerely because every one of us got a thought got an idea got a feeling about something and just just saying it sincerely and easily maybe someone could be agree with you someone not but that it doesn't matter it's also it's also a matter of respect, respect of the speakers and respect of the listeners. To a respect to to hear, to, um, to pay attention to someone else or another point of view. That's it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, so basically, I mean, I I enjoyed my I enjoyed the experience. But for you, you stayed in uh, the academy for longer. You know, I remember you having some negative experiences there and not all your experiences were great, right? C can you say a word about like what you took away by the end of the experience? What was your feeling towards the school? Well, <sighs> thinking, back, uh, thinking back at the, those days that I have, uh, I have to say uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful experience. Of course, uh, in every experience, there is uh, the good part and also the not so good part. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I felt really, 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 really good to the academy. And I prefer the, the, one, uh, the one in Firenze instead of uh, this one in Bologna. Mm. And uh, the better things, mm, then, but in the end, uh, in the end, uh, it's just a bunch of things we, which I easily dealt with. And uh, I re talking about uh, hipsters talking about um, i do remember the, the hip talking about intellectualoids uh, or um, ra radical chic uh, or um, bonjour bohemian uh, people oh oh man i'm so sensitive i need to i need to to get drunk because uh, because the world is overwhelming oh, yeah. Yeah. Beach, please. <laughs> of course, of course, you. But I think I think even you uh, recognize th those kind of people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I really don't like this kind. This kind of. Uh, uh, I think those are everywhere, those are everywhere, yes. especially in art programs. You will find yeah. plenty of those in our art programs also. Yes, yes. in fact, uh, this uh, kind of uh, pe pack of dogs, uh, the, the Bimbis dogs, the, uh, yeah, the, the pack, uh, oh, this, this group of people making a, what's it, what's it, a click? A click. A click. Ma making the click. I really don't like this. Right. And also, I really don't like uh, Bimbi. Ne never said nothing to them. Uh, it was really incorrect in the regards of the other students because uh, it was not the school of BMB. It was this is the ac the uh, the academy, and uh, this is a public place. And if you, if BMB 
wanted to do his own clique, he should, he should establish his own school. And that's, this is the thing I, I, did, I never liked. And also another thing, and this is a peculiarity of Italy, is disorganization. Sorry about that. Mm. Yes. I, I said, uh, the other thing I really don't like uh, is a peculiarity, uh, peculiar things, a peculiarity typical from Italy, and uh, this is a disorganization, oh, okay. lack of organization. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yes, I did. Well, that well we, we learn how the world spins around, but damn. <laughs> I, I want I, I want to break sometime. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you have you, We have to worry about everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I want to I want to get more into. Um, I'd be curious to hear your perspectives uh, later, not now, but later about uh, you. You were living in Germany recently and stuff during during Oof. a lot of the lockdowns. But um, because that's like usually that's usually held as the contrast to Italy's like chaos is Germany's order, right? But let's but let's save that for later. I want to look at some of your um photography right now. So let me go ahead and share the document. Um, uh, there we go. All right. So you when uh, I met you, you were you were still sort of figuring out what your like primary what your primary voice was going to be artistically. You were still doing a lot of drawing and painting and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, um, but you, at some point you decided to go with photography. Mm -hmm. Gilardi. Okay. I, I can't forget. You know, see what it is. It's the G H and then there's an I and then there's an L and in my brain, it switches the L and the I and the G and, and then the, I'm thinking it's the, the G, which I can't pronounce. But, uh, yeah. Gilardi is not too hard. I should be able to say that. Got the, got the, the tombo there too. All right. So, um, when did you change to photography as your as your main focus? When I was writing my final thesis. Okay. So this was the last year of uh, Firenze. Yes, okay. last year of academy. Okay. Uh, even when I've been there finding you, I'm. I was uh, thinking a lot about. A possibility, uh, a possibility with uh, a future with photography, and uh, I was, uh, I was uh, thinking about uh, this, uh, this feeling, this uh, a sort of calling. Don't know. I don't know if you can understand. It's like a vo it's like a voice buzzing in the brain. Yeah. What if? Uh, but maybe <laughs> try. And uh, I, I, wrote, I wrote my thesis to giving myself some answers. In fact, I wrote a thesis about the, um, the relationship between uh, photography and contemporary painting, mm -hmm. as, uh, considering especially free artists, uh, Francis Bacon, Andy Warhol, and uh, Gerhard Richter. Sure. One of my favorite artists, Gerhard Richter. Yeah, I like Richter a lot too. Yeah. And uh, this, uh, this series of pictures that then are we looking at now on my portfolio, as it, as it wrote in the, in the title, this is a homage to Dusseldorf. And so this is a homage to the school of Dus the Dusseldorf Schule and also Gerhard Richter. I see. The blur for Richter, right? The blur, yes. So what, was, and what was Richter's fascination with the blur? What was that about? Because it's, um, for, it's a photographical language, is the, yes, the blur image. Mm -hmm. uh, Richter it was a great, uh, great artist because so finally, he mixed he he mixed up uh, two different two different uh, universe two different medium and uh, we are talking about painting and photography it, richter was one of the 
most uh, efficace, come si dice? Most relevant. Oh, relevant, okay. Uh, who, who wrote a new, uh, who wrote a new painting gram grammar mm -hmm. uh, using the grammar of photography. Okay, all right. But you know, I, what, what I'm curious about, um, uh, and, and then maybe the reason I'm curious about this is because that's what I'm seeing in these artworks uh, right here, is what it actually it's just a, It's just a sample. Yeah, yeah. But what did the blur mean? Like, what did it mean to get, why was it meaningful? Was it meaningful or was it not, not meaningful? It was just a challenge for, for Richter. And, and what does it mean for you to have these blurred images? Richter using, used the blur to, not just for imitating a photography, uh, not well done photography, but also to underline as, uh, as Chuck Close did, mm -hmm. the, the, he made it just for underline the, the, great, the great debate the great deal then uh, picture is not reality even even though photography got um dire a straight reference with reality is not reality mimesis does not make something real yeah I, I gotta say i just gotta say i find that so boring that's so boring for me that doesn't speak to anything like that conversation was going on for a century did we really need mm -hmm. to talk about that for a hundred years? Did we really need to discuss that for a <laughs> yes, hundred years? But I mean, because it's pretty fucking obvious. <laughs> but for the for the for the dead people, it was not obvious. I guess I don't know. I don't know. Well, t so tell me now about these. Tell me specifically. even though even though what was photography for all the nineteenth, all the twentieth century, principally was a report reportage reporting right was uh, press was uh, um he was a, fo a photographer on the battlefields was um, people make uh, people making reportages about um, peculiar uh, social situations in the suburbs or in the big cities uh, or from the other or other side of the world, because photography was it was considered a true documentation of reality. Right. I, I, if I see it, if a photography tells me something, I have to believe it. Right. But nowadays is 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 not more is not more is anymore. Ah, sorry. It's not more like this. Mm -hmm. And then also we can, we can uh, start talking about the uh, post-truth, uh, manipulation of truth, manipulation of uh, meaning, history, facts, uh, just uh, using a grammar because uh, pra practically photography as every medium is a, is a language. Language got a grammar. Mm -hmm. And if you can use properly this grammar, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Photography does not lie, but the photographer can do. Mm, can lie. Yeah. yeah. Hey, there you are. Finish. See, that's the hair I remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good both ways. You're lucky. Uh, well, OK, some, some really fun work in here. So now, specifically, I can't nail you down with these. You're not going to tell me a little bit about the meaning of these artworks and, and what, mm -hmm. why the blurs and why these very, it seemed to be manipulated digitally, obviously, with these hard lines, the hard, you know, uh, horizontal uh, lines. Mm -hmm. like what, what's going on here? Did you, did you go into with the... Mm, did you focus the inside of the picture? Uh, can you see? But for, first off, let me ask. When I scroll, do you see me scrolling? You, you see these moving up and down? Mm -hmm. So I can I could just go into one right now. Yes, that's it. All right. How, how close should I go? Oh, OK. That's OK. It's OK like that. Mm. 
did you notice those kind of writings? Well, yes, I see that, but I don't know what it means. Mm -hmm. And if you check all the other doors. Oh, yeah, it's on there too. Okay, CMB, CMB, is that um, referring to color in photography? Cayenne, mm -hmm. magenta, no, that would be. <laughs> the trichromy, uh, quadrichromy is a channel, magenta, blue, and, um, and a sort of black. Is that, is that what this refers to? So the RGB, no, uh, was now yellow, yellow, magenta, yellow, magenta, blue, and black. Oh, yeah, I was pretty. It's the RGB, right? And then CMYK. So this, yeah. <laughs> this, this would be a bastardization. So it's not, uh, what, so what is it? I, I give up. <laughs> <laughs> I give up too soon. I'm, uh, supposed to... This is, uh, those writings are, um, are a part of a re come si dice? Uh, a religious in italiano <laughs> seguire in italiano not for your uh, listeners I'll, I'll give them subtitles <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm trying to do it in english well you're doing a good job thank you those writings are a, a part of a religious um it's a religious ceremony. Oh, really? Mm -mm 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 -mm. From, from where? And uh, the funny things, this uh, kind of this uh, ceremony, I always say kind, sorry. This uh, ceremony is um, Catholic, it's not Protestant. Okay. In, in Germany, there, are, there is um, a balanced uh, co living between uh, Catholics and uh, Protestants. Okay. And this ceremony is Catholic, but there's not in Italy. And uh, the idea of the the idea of this work, the concept of this work, is born from those writings. When I found them the first time, I I asked myself, "What is this?" Mm. I found uh, those writings on a door and uh, I said uh, probably was something uh, related to, to the family who, live, who lives in uh, that house. And then I found another one and another one and another one. It was really curious. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know, understand what should, what should those writings could be. And, uh, at least, of course, it pretty pretty easy. I just uh, I just asked I just asked to my whole to my guest, uh, what's the what the, what are those writings? And she's explained me about uh, the Drei König singen, the singer of the three kings, the singing of uh, the three kings. Of course, uh, we are talking about uh, the three uh, mage kings. Right, yeah, the ones who visited at the at the nativity, and the nativity. Yes, in fact, this ceremony is is celebrated the six the sixth of January. Mm -hmm. Also, in Italy, is um, is celebrated, mm -hmm. and the name is. Uh, uh, Epif ah, it's Epiphany. Epiphany. Six, oh, okay. Yes, this is Dry Koenig Singen is a part of Epiphany, 6th of January. Right. And um, what this writing means? The number is the year. Mm -hmm. the CMB mm -hmm. are the initial, the initial of the, the names, the three mage names. So okay. we got Caspar, Melchior, and Balthasar. Okay. And it's also an acronym in Latin, and it means uh, uh, Christus Mansion Benedictat, uh, Christ um, 
Benedict would be like blessing. Blessing. Yeah, uh, Christ bless this house. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, how the dry the dry clinic thing works? It should be it should be pretty nice, and especially for families, because the the children of the of the neighborhood of the neighborhood mm -hmm. uh, dressed like the the free mages. Oh, okay. Uh, going around the neighborhood, mm -hmm. singing, singing songs, uh, uh, or um, uh, how you say it when you when you say a, a poem, R reciting, recite, uh, yes, reciting poems, uh, and people from the houses uh, hearing them coming. Uh, they can make an, an offer they can donate some uh, some money for the um, for the church okay and for the donators the the children gives this um, this piece of card mm -hmm. and uh, people are free to apply these cards on their door uh, and it means uh, yeah this house uh, is, is had a don uh, ma made a donation to the dry cleaning uh, singer. I see, I see. Huh, interesting. And it's uh, so starting from this ceremony, I, I'd like to rec reconnect myself to the beginning feeling of, uh, of uh, how can I say, of, of what is it? Of ex how can you say? Cosa? This feeling of uh, when you when you know when you don't understand something when you don't uh, when you don't understand something there is something wrong uh, where you how can you say when you don't understand something like when you feel that there's a meaning but you can't quite articulate it. Dimmi in italiano. Uh, Oh, no, it's, not, it, it, it's not mis no, it's not misunderstanding. It's not misunderstanding. It, it's like, uh, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Baffled. I, I would call that bafflement, but I don't really know. I think being baffled, but what? Huh? Okay. Like, uh, like you, you're talking about a, a mixture of interest with confusion at the same time. Like you're interested and you're confused. That kind of thing. Yes. Yeah, sure. I would say. Bafflement might might get there. Bafflement to be baffled, baffled to be baffled Baff to be baffled. Whoa! It's like oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard sometimes this word. Yeah, but there's really, probably a better really one. There's, there's probably a better one, but I'm just not thinking of it right now. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to rejoin this feeling of bafflement because uh, I was a stranger in a strange land yeah. and I of course it's um it's a strange feelings it's a, a feeling of uh, disconnection a feeling of um it's like I think also you could um, experience these kind of feelings when, when you are into a place, but you feel different, you feel disconnected to this place, you cannot understand the language, you cannot understand the, the, the signs in the street. Right. You, you, got, you got lost. Uh, yeah. uh, you don't know how to, how to ask uh, for, for help. But yeah, maybe a little alienated, right? Like a little bit mm. of alienation or something. And so I focus this uh, feeling on, on this subject, the writings and the doors. Closed doors, the <laughs> mean, the closed doors, the meaning is, is not reachable for me. Yeah. And, and those writings, writings which I cannot understand initially. <laughs> right, right, right. And I... so I'd like, I, I tried. I tried to recreate this 
feeling of um, disconnection of bufferments right. because this the subject the the material thing something mm -hmm. i can understand i made it blurry i made it incomprehensible ah. the, the only and the only thing comprehensive are a writing which i don't understand the meaning <laughs> I get it. And it really comes through, like you said, with the fact that it's a closed door. It's a, it's a surface that you can't penetrate, you know? It's, mm. that's, that's very interesting. Now I start to feel the, this German feeling. <laughs> it's probably not fair to the German people. Uh, I really like, uh, I don't know if you can see where my cursor is, but I really like this one. Yes. A lot. It's very, something about that composition is very powerful. Very interesting. This one also is interesting with the this bar is going across. Oh, so that's that. Thank you for uh, for explaining that. It's it's a it's a compelling series of work. I I would like to see it in person a little bit bigger. So all right, coming up on Plato. Let's see. Um, I'm not gonna. I, I bet that's a good good body of writing there. But I I'll just go ahead and let you explain it for the viewer. Sometimes the you know it's when you're listening to someone read something, it's not as nice sometimes as just hearing someone speak freely mm -hmm. about about it. But let me see. Let me see what I can get from this. I, I'll try to be a good viewer here and uh, and contemplate a little bit on my own case. This is interesting. Uh, these when you you didn't actually. I can tell this is Photoshop. You didn't actually hang these. But is this what they would look like if they're hanged, or is this? Oh yeah. Thing? Oh yes. This is a mock-up, of course, okay. just for a demonstration. But but but. Is this whole thing considered one photograph, or is it this is how the photographs would look like if you were able to print them and hang them? Yes, and the, the second one. The second one. Oh, okay, all right. So there, you've got these symbols. Maybe I got I got another installation below. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Could you? Is this? Is this? Could you? Could you right. scroll down? Uh, yeah, no, sure. there, there is not. There is not. It's an old. Uh, it's an this, old version. This one seems to relate to the previous one, right? Because we've got. We've got text, uh, this time not really text, but number, well, numbers, there was numbers before too. So it's this, uh, you know, strange sort of uh, recognizable, but, 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 but weird and, and inaccessible. They become alien somehow. Hmm. That's kind of what I feel. I don't know if you wanna speak to them. Oh, you're talking about the solids. I see, I see, I see, I see. Oh, that's kind of an interesting idea. What, what's the, the, so for you, you're making a link between the shape of the sign then, right? The shape of the sign and the platonic solids. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. What, t tell me about that. Like why, what, what's the connection there? The connection between numbers and the solids? No, between these arbitrary street, they're street signs, right? The, sorry? Are there, there street signs, right? The signs that you would see in the street for traffic? No? Uh, you, you thought uh, this was like um, uh, this, a street sign? Yeah, but it's not. Oh, absolutely no. Oh, okay, okay, all right. So you have to enlighten me. Those are the platonic solids. Okay. Uh, themselves. I see. I, I, I dig them. Uh, I dig them out from the universe. <laughs> nice with okay. those very hands. Right. <laughs> right. So. Um, and now I am radioactive. Radioactive. <laughs> what? 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 Well, okay. I, my brain's wanting to go in a couple different directions. First, first off. Um, I should tell the viewer that I like Platonism, um, but that I, that I also am agnostic. I don't know if there is a God. I don't know if there is a human spirit or not. Mm -hmm. And obviously Platonism requires, I would say requires, maybe some people would disagree. I would say Platonism require, is founded on a belief that there is a spirit, that there is a spiritual essence of intelligence and ideas, that ideas themselves have spirits. Um, mm -hmm. what, where do you fall on this conversation? And how does that enter this work? 
Well, this work is not about Platonism in itself. Okay. It's just uh, related to symbols. Just related to symbols. Yeah. I well, I my research principally is about uh, symbols. It's about the the root of uh, pictures of um, the the beginning of everything. The beginning of uh, of every subject, every object. We got a um, dictionary. Um, picture dictionary in our in our head this dictionary is uh, part uh, this dictionary is part of the um, of our perception of our culture if you if you see the pictures of a, a skull for example what do you think yeah that that's it why skull is there is uh, related to death well, you know, it's very interesting that you mentioned that because there are very few, I'll answer your question in a minute, but I just, as an aside, there are very few truly universal symbols. But I think that the skull is a universal. I think it's the same in, when you see it in Aztec art, it's the same as when you see it in Roman art, as when you see it in Chinese art. It's always death. And I mean, oh, the, you know, it's, it's almost too obvious to, to speak, but... I mean, archetypes. Yeah, I mean, well, it's what's left over when we die. You, it's, you can't look at a human skull. You know what it is. It's recognizable. You know what it is. You know that it's in you right now, and you will never see yours until you die and look at an x-ray. Uh, it's, it's a vet. We are so attracted to faces. You know, this is a fascinating thing. It's something I think about with Instagram a lot. Like, we're so attracted to faces, and that is, you know, it's a, it's a face. It's the face of death. For us, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, that's it. About face, oh, this is the beginning of a very, very, very big topic about um, identity, about uh, uh, I about icons, mm -hmm. and uh, about selfies, about Instagram, about a portrait, <laughs> portrait in the history, and. Uh, this is just a parenthesis, huh? For example, you do you remember in Italy in uh, in the past centuries they used to make they used to make a they used to make a portraits by profile. Yes, yes. And just uh, the portrait in three three quarters. Right, is pretty a, pretty recent innovation. Yeah. <laughs> anyway back to back to this work as i told you before uh my research is um is related it's also related to instagram because uh, in the um, in the visual society our our sight is our sense much more hyper stimulated hyper stimulated so stimulated that he got anesthetized yeah. because because it's uh, uh, it's physio it's physiologic. Uh, yeah, yeah. He he need he need our sight our sight needs a break, and yeah. so you, you're talking I, about you're talking about in general, not not even talking about Instagram, just talking about in general the amount yes, of in general. Stimuli, uh, yeah. In, in general, yes. Right. So, so okay. TV or um, city city signs. Um, not even. I mean, not even in nature, right? Even in nature, there are too many plants. There's too many things. There's things everywhere. It's so much. To it's see. different because uh, uh, they are they are true. They are the real thing. Uh, it's not, it's not a picture. Uh, no. It's not a picture of something. It's not a. It's not ar artificial. Yeah. Pictures are artificial. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yes, so I, I, I always wondered, I always uh, asked to myself, uh, why, why so many pictures? 
do we need them? Mm. Are they healthy for us, for our brain, for our eyes, for our culture, for our sensibility? Mm -hmm. As uh, as Andy Warhol, Andy Warhol said, if you see a car crash a thousand times, yeah. it became it becomes uh, boring to you. Right, right, right. Or, or is it Palestinian? Yes. This is uh, this is the mechanism of an anesthetic. And anesthesia, right? Okay. This is the mechanism how the anesthesia um, kicked in uh, in our perception, because this is the this is the point. The, it's a matter of our perception, how we per, how we percepire, how we how perceive. we perceive. perceive how we perceive the world, how we perceive ourselves, and. Uh, it's, it's bringing a lot of issues yeah. to society, especially for the, for the youngest ones. Right. People who, who does not have the instruments, the cognitive instruments to separate reality to fiction. Right, right. And this is very, very important for me and also tragic and as uh, Jean Baudrillard say the is the cover is the world covered up with picture or is the world composed by pictures mm. Mm. so oh, wait 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 stop now you just talked about postmodernism we can't of we course can't talk about it without go we gotta go there now what do you <laughs> you you tell me your your answer <laughs> Well, I'm a I'm a guy of my time, and uh, of course, postmodernism is part of me as part of you. <laughs> Don't you think we're beyond postmodernism now, though? Un, un, po and not postmodernism. You see, post, you see, postmodernism. Post postmodernism. Post Whoa! <laughs> I, I think we're headed there. I think we're pretty much headed there. I, I, I have a video. I have a video. Uh, maybe I'll link it. It's floating above here. I have a video that talks about three stages of postmodernism. And uh, I think we're in what I, what I would call the late, late stage postmodernism. And it's so different than what it was before that it's almost a whole different thing. Uh, but this late stage postmodernism is going to, is going to keep going on it in its own direction. And I can't predict right now whether it's going to end or or whether or whether the sort of anti woke movement is going to is going to win. And if the anti woke pushback against the because so, the woke sort of paradigm that we're in right now is connected to postmodernism, although it's so radically different than what the original postmodernism was. Um, but that's a paradigm that's going in one direction. There's the pushback that if the pushback succeeds or isn't like let's say wiped out like uh you know completely uh if it if it continues in in a geographic location although nowadays well that's a big conversation mm, my point is see. my point is is that there is definitely a two different channels of post postmodernism that are going in in different directions right now but go, i'm sorry i didn't mean to so i want to know you said that the, is baudrillard is it baudrillard He's asking the question, is the world covered in images or is the world just made of, of images? What do you think? What does Marco Tombo Ghilardi think? I think it's a um, personal and um, um, subjective, Subject. sub subjective um, matter. So you, but, you, you think it's uh, made of images? Because, because, yes, it could be, absolutely. You're a postmodernist then. You're definitely... I, I don't want to... I want to I wanna be postmodernism, and so I cannot be radical in making statements. Right, right. And so I say, it could be. Yeah. And... Uh, Even though talking about post postmodernism is modern because uh, it's still thinking, thinking uh, about history and the culture as um, a sort of levels. 
this one, then I I feel we're still living in a big uh, in this in this deep mist. Mm. It's uh, so liquid, so unidentified, unidentified, mm. and for me it's not a it's not a problem. It's not a matter. I I'm okay with it. Maybe because I born and grew up in this in this zeitgeist, in this mentality, and uh, talking about about uh, innovations. Well, of course, postmodern postmodernism does not consider anymore innovation, but the in the idea of, of innovation of postmodernism is not about um, picking uh, picking out a rabbit from the magician hat, but is uh, create new new meanings. Mm. Uh, someone someone said I don't remember. For those who believe to can do something new, they are signing their uh, their condanna. Come si dice? Condanna. Condanna a morte. Oh, um, their condemnation to death. Condemnation to death. Yes. <laughs> And uh, and I'm okay. I, I'm okay also with this. I I don't pretend to be an alien, to be a Mozart, to be a to be a genius. I don't pretend to create something new. I think it's absolutely. I think it's a. Uh, it's also pretty. I mean, I mean, no offense, but I think it's pretty ignorant to pretend to create something new because uh, actually everything was done. Well, I agree with that. But what does that have to do with whether the world is or isn't made of images? Which, which, which this is how I interpret that. This is how I interpret that as if the world is made with images rather than covered in images then there that 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 is just like saying that the subjective experience there is no objectivity it's all subjective right i mean that's mm -hmm. you could basically say that how how does that relate to the idea that you know um you know everything's been done or whatever mm, uh yes maybe it should be a little bit out of topic mm. Well, I guess I guess there's also it's also part of postmodernism, right? Because people mm -hmm. also talk about like uh, the I th this was a really fascinating conversation I heard uh, being discussed recently. Uh, simulacra, this idea of the thing, simulacra, the copy of the copy of the copy, <laughs> sort of a thing, right? So I think I maybe in what you're saying, that's definitely is another facet of postmodernism. Mm. Yeah. Another phase of postmodern. Of course, it could be because uh, time um, time pass time passes by and things changes. Of course, is uh, undeniable. Mm. So, so coming back, to are you are you are you asking me what I think about a world made by pictures instead of a world uh, covered by pictures? Um, well, I don't know. I don't know the distinction there, but I would like to tie it back to this artwork. Can you, can we, um, can we take what we've been discussing and, and, and maybe shed some light on what were your intentions with these artworks? Mm -hmm. My intention was to, to create it, to, um, to, have make a statement with an example of how many meanings could be lying inside a, a figure 
and uh, I search for the origin for the the seed of the of this figure mm -hmm. and to start to starting uh, a journey to um, to find it back to rejoin uh, to rejoin it mm. i i choose uh, some geometrical shapes which practically are uh, abstract are abstract figure but paradoxically in the abstract picture in in those abstract pictures um lying a history of uh, concrete figures uh, concrete subjects mm. it's like a, it's like a dna something invisible something uh, mm, people people need to schematize it to understand it and studying it but uh, dna composed uh, our body compose everything it's like a uh, 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 it's like a quantistic it's uh yes uh, <laughs> the quant the damn sorry quantistic quantistic, quantistic pertaining to numbers Yes, the um, physics, ah, yeah, physics, quantistic physics. Oh, okay. oh, oh, quantum physics. Quantum physics. Sorry. Quantum physics. Yeah. Sorry. No, that's all right. <laughs> you, how do you say that in Italian? Physica quantistica. Oh, okay, interesting. Well, this is a fun thing about language. I think this is really fun in languages. You know, um, we do the same thing. Like, if uh, you know, when I'm speaking in Italian. And I'm not really sure of the word, but I know that there's a lot of words that are very similar. So I'm making yes. guess that, you know, so it's a so, sorry for my for my interpolation of uh, interpol Italian. interpolation. Yes. No, it's good. It's good. I like it. <laughs> you could you could cut my my buffering part. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is, it seems like a very deep uh, thing. It's, very, it's got many layers and, um, and, you know, maybe it would take a while to sort of unwind all those layers. I do like the way that you've uh, isolated each one and its own sort of black square. It kind of gives yeah. it, it needs more space. I, yes, I got, uh, I took uh, inspiration from the, the monolith of, of uh, 2001 um, space odyssey. Space, space odyssey. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. I, 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 it's something I appreciate the stillness. I do feel a sense of that. Maybe the physics that you're talking about, it's sort of like, yeah, it's it's uh, it's interesting. The next one is um, anthropobotanic. <laughs> Which is, do, do you want do you want to uh, do you want to talk about all my all my works? <laughs> oh, I thought we were going. I thought we were gonna. Well, we don't have to spend too much time on them. But um, yeah, I mean, I thought I would show like you know give give it at least a, a good idea. Well, let's 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 overview them really quick. So you've got this one, which is each one is sort of a. a this is my much more German work I ever did. This Why is, is it German. What this it is German. <laughs> Why? Because uh, Germany is. How do you say? Another uh, language inter interpolation. <laughs> uh, Germany. Germany is symmetry. Is uh, uh, rigore. Rigore. Rigor. Rigor. It's ri oh, okay. See, it's usually rigor. it works. It usually works, right? <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> it's symmetry, rigors, uh, tidiness, uh, uh -huh. uh, objective. Oh, that's what this is. Huh? Yeah. It is tidy. They're definitely very tidy spaces. <laughs> very clean, very tidy. That's the, that's the German aspect, huh? Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it was it was funny. It was funny. This. Uh, ah, right, right. I I wonder about uh, what's the meaning of a a, a plant of um, a a living thing inside a, a, a well not inside but outside its own habitat. Right. So what about us? What about human being? Yeah. But someone said the arti artificiality is is the much more natural thing for a human being. <laughs> yeah, right. That is our natural environment, the artificial environment. Because uh, those plants did not choice, did not uh, did not choose to to live into a. Uh, into an apartment, into a, an artificial space. Right. Uh, it's like they were they were forced to live uh, to live <laughs> into the space. And what about if some of them are fake? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Then it becomes simulacra. Then it becomes postmodern. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. I, I I've been appreciating how crisp and clear. The photography is this is something that I, I I gotta okay now I have to be honest I have to be honest about something I'm one of the stereotypes of the people who like didn't value photography high enough you know what I mean as an art form and I, I hate to admit it I hate to admit it but you know this is a this is another issue that I that I thought would be interesting to talk about like photography is kind of not is not given the importance within fine art that you know mm, uh, it's not it's not like this no it's not absolutely not no oh, okay you don't think not, that, any, not anymore you don't think that photography is discriminated against i think photography oh absolutely not what and see nowadays i'm trying to be woke the... i'm trying to be woke and defend photography as the discriminated art form <laughs> absolutely no and see uh photography and nowadays is one of the most valuable form of art okay. existing okay just one moment because i have to live in a oh you gotta go in a half uh, in a 30 minutes que pecato, yes. que well we could we could have the second round we can have the second round, yeah, because we we didn't get into so many issues that are that will be fun to talk yeah. about. Well, then let's just let's just let's finish up with this subject. Then, uh, since we we're, we're talking about it, you're saying that photography is not a sort of discriminated art form that mm -hmm. people aren't having given more interest uh, to painting and sculpture, for instance, than to photography. Even though, because uh, talking about uh, the the art sphere mm -hmm. photography it's became something more than a photography and not only in uh, not only by the meanings but also by the the manufacturing manufacturing itself let's talk about one of the the saint patreon of the one of the pioneers of the art photography was an american and uh, i'm talking about jeff wall well, okay i'm gonna look him up the one on on the right is uh, his first uh, big and great uh, artwork the okay. destroy the destroy the room yes okay that's it all right so, all right, so tell me, tell me about Jeff Wall's significance and why, uh, and what it has to do with- First of all, all the picture you've seen, even though someone of them looks like uh, um, a snapshot, an instant snapshot, all the picture are precisely uh, created. It was yeah. a thought and uh, got, Mm. You mean and, you and act oh. and acted. Acted, yeah. They're, they're thought and acted. Choreographed, so to speak. Yeah, choreographed. Right, 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 right. So in that sense, like a painting. Yes. Every every pictures are really, really, really big. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, made with uh, some particular kind of camera, it's not just the, the typical camera they use, uh, the, big, uh, the big format, yeah. the, the, I don't know how you, how you call it in, in English, Banco Ottico. The, the, the biggest camera you have also to put your head. Uh, um, oh, like the um, old style kind of thing. It's not, yes, it's like old style, but of course they are super modern and super technologically camera, but okay. the, the format, uh, the shape, the dimension is, is the biggest one. Right. And um, if, you, if you want to check uh, the, if you want to check the, the picture, uh -huh. sometimes if the, if the um, environment is, so, is too en enlightened, you have to cover up yourself to to see clearly. Right. Oh, you passed before. Um, ah, that one. This one. Yes, you you're in. No, no, the other one. A photo. The one that was yeah. previous. The yes, the the gust of wind. Yes, oh. this one. This one. And this is. Uh, This is really, really postmodern. Ah, okay. okay. Probably, probably you uh, you have already seen this picture. <laughs> you you're overestimating my uh, my erudite cultured. Uh, experience. Look look at the title. Look at the title. Sudden gust of wind after Hokusai. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious! <laughs> that's so funny. Okay, okay. Try to get back. To try to go back, what, to see where the inspiration? You want me to try uh, to find the one of Hokusai? Maybe, maybe it's uh, on, the, on the list. Hold on. Uh, Oksai, Jeff Ball. Yes. I want to see, I want to see the original, but, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Ah, that's interesting. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Huh. Very interesting. I never, I didn't even know this work, but I love Hokusai. I didn't even know this work by him. And you, you pronounce it, and you pronounce it corre correctly. Nice, uh, nice what, job, Brian. What are you talking about, about Hokusai? Yes. All right, right. Well, you know what? I used to say Hokusai. Oh, and then I heard, I heard a documentary. I heard a documentary. It sounded, honestly, if I'm going to be honest, it sounded like they said Hokusai. They barely Hokusai. said any ooh at all. So when did you start studying Japanese? How come you, where, where's your, where's, how much Japanese do you know? And where, where did the... Oh, well, well, I absolutely don't know. I absolutely cannot speak in Japanese. Oh. But I am, I'm a lover of the Japan culture. And right. I have some friends who study the Japanese and are also very, very big fan of the manga and anime world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was uh, in the past pretty into it. Mm -hmm. I like. Yeah. I like. Not not anymore. Yeah. I just I just uh, uh, read uh, I just read um, a series of manga some months ago just for uh, back in the days. Oh, I remember it. Yeah. Uh, but yes, I I'm, I cannot speak Japanese. I don't like <laughs> manga at all. I hate it. I like really? I like ukiyo-e and I like you know traditional Japanese art, uh, but I don't like. In fact, I even like contemporary Japanese art. Uh, if we want to talk about like you know um, Yoko Ono or um, what's this uh, lady who's really who's who's gotten really popular lately? Um, she does the Infinity Room. You know, one of Yayoi Yayoi Kusama. Uh, other just so, so much good Japanese art, but I can't stand manga. I can't stand it. I hate it. It depends. There are ma mangas and mangas, and uh, there are some great, great uh, drawers, some great, great mangakas, uh -huh. and also some great stories. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some also really, mm, you know, uh, in Japan, in Japan is uh, different instead of uh, the Western culture because. Uh, they make some um, some operas like 
anime or manga some history that we can recognize them as a, something for um, for teenagers for kids but in job in job in japan and it's absolutely not like this well you're talking about is, you're talking about anime that's like a little more sophisticated like i saw one yes grave absolutely of fireflies you, you see this one grave of oh, fireflies oh so powerful so uh powerful. yes <laughs> Yeah. Yes, very, no, very I understand. Powerful. I understand. It can be. It can be. Uh, it can be more. But I just in general. In general, I just don't like the style. I don't like the style of the face. I don't know why they they, they draw this face. It's so gross to me. Um, <laughs> it's and it's actually. I would say it's racist. I'm gonna say anime is racist because it's a denial of East Asian facial features. Uh, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna go out. Mm -hmm. and say, I think it's. I don't like. It's it. a, it's another interesting topic. Yes. Yeah. 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 But there are also some uh, mangakas who draws people with uh, Asian um, characters. Show me one. Let's put one of those into the chat. I want to see. I've never seen it. Never seen one. I saw like a really early one from like the 1960s that did that. But I never mm -hmm. seen one from like the 70s or later that, that uses actual uh, uh, facial there features. There is like one of my favorite. I don't remember the name. Maybe I got something here. Uh, I would love to see it. I would love to see it. Okay, Ryoichi Ikigami. <laughs> Let me see if I... What time you have to go, Marco? Uh, in, um, in 15 minutes. Shit, shit. Uh, I know. Well, you know what? That, screw screw the, the, the manga artist. Let's talk a little bit more about yours and let's just finish off on the conversation on photography. Next time when we come back, if you want to do this again, really sure. just curious to hear about like, you know, uh, what was your experience, you know, growing up with, uh, like we were talking about with the Brazilian background and, and all that and on the complexity of identity and, and well, like <laughs> actually I, I absolutely, I have absolutely no Brazilian background. No, except. right, right, right. <laughs> I know. I, I don't mean that, but I mean like origins, the, the genes. So the genes, the genes, the genes. I know you okay. don't have an actual background, mm -hmm. but that, I think that's the that's a fascinating topic because I have Italian genes and no Italian background. <laughs> so <laughs> I think it, it speaks to the power of culture more than than genes. That's why I find it a, a fascinating subject. Yeah, absolutely. But and um, uh, yes, I I also talk with um with a New Yorker girl who was the assistant of uh, an Italian artist, mm -hmm. assistant. And uh, we talked about this uh, topic and she, she said something really, really interesting, really clever. And uh, she said, it's like uh, we, we, we must wake up one day and forgo forget everything about genes, about race, about uh, uh, ancestors. Uh, for example, talking about Brazilian people, Brazilian people are mulatto, black, white, blondy, uh, curly, dark haired, uh, mm -hmm. la Latinos. Uh, so-called Latinos, but they are. <laughs> but one day, people should wake up and forget about everything. We are, Brazilians are Brazilians. Doesn't matter if they are black, uh, black white, mulattoes. They are Brazilians. Yeah, it's I, a common history. Yes, probably. This is the, maybe maybe this is the reason why it should be important to keep alive traditions and the history because feelings of belonging is not from genes, skin color. Mm. It's about uh, what kind of history we share together, what kind of culture, what kind of perception of totally. society or society we got. Totally. And this was 
this uh, this topic it's really interesting because I I heard once um, a podcast of one of the greatest and uh, most loved histor historian historian yeah, yeah Italian historian and he is Alessandro Barbero and you should love him <laughs> it is wonderful okay. and. Uh, in the late, in the la, in the last uh, years, uh, he became really, really famous. Uh, also, to the uh, in with uh, sorry, also for the youngest one because uh, he is very funny. He is very excited. He is very so into uh, and enthusiastic about his work, mm -hmm. and he talks really, really well. So I, I just pulled them up. I'll take a look at. And Barbero, I I heard, I used to hear a lot of podcasts by Barbero, but in this one in particular, he talked about the the biggest, the huge sacred Roman Empire, the empire with two capitals, Rome, Roma, Roma, and Constantinopolis. Mm -hmm the western the western capital and the eastern capital mm -hmm. the roman empire uh, had uh, populations from every kind of um, every 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 corner of the world uh, the world known until until uh, yeah until the time uh, yeah, so there uh, the latins was roman latins instead the, the central italian living uh, people the the germans were romans the vikings were romans Nor Nor northern africans were romans the turkish vikings, people the vikings didn't get into rome where where Vikings got into Rome? They they were they were assimilated. Really? really? I didn't some ever hear is. about Vikings who got some, uh, some of them. Yes, some of them a little bit. Every, a little bit from Denmark, maybe. Yeah. Every every population were barbarians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Barbary. Barbary. Mm -hmm. Bar mm -hmm. Under under the sign of Roma. Everyone became um, citizens of the greatest, great, of the greatest empire, right. and so uh, people living, uh, uh, a people, a person living in uh, in Turkish, it was not Turkish back in the day, right. but uh, a Turkish people, he could say, "I'm Roman," right. and a North African people, he could say, "I'm Roman." And a German people, he could say, "I am Roman." Right. So, what is a, what is a population? What is a what is a race? Totally. I, I think that's the most no, natural way to to see the question of ethnicity. Is the most natural way. The way that we see it in America is very unnatural. The, our mm -hmm. our hyper focus on genes. Our hyper focus on you know, the look uh, is very unnatural. It's not how most human populations think about it. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, um, I'm married to an Arab woman now, and she, you know, she talked to me a lot about how Arabs see uh, race. So it's also so different and really, really like, I would say even less than in Europe, it's even less based on, um, you know, on, on your look or your, your genes and stuff. So it's very, very fascinating. Um, and I did, uh, speaking of Brazil, I did read an anthropological study that said that within Brazil, the people tended to see race as so flexible that it was possible, they would think of the, a brother and sister who come from the same mother and same father as different races, just if they look mm -hmm. a little different. Because for them, it's so shallow, the, the, the meaning of the look is so shallow that if two people who are related to the same parents look different, they can be different races because it doesn't really mean it. It doesn't really mean there what it means here. You know what I mean? 
So mm-hmm. I mean, it's like it's a it's a really uh, it's a really interesting question. I I want I don't think we have time to get into it, but I really wanted to hear your views on like what on the whole woke phenomenon and whether that aspect of culture is taking hold in Europe the way it's taking hold in America. Um, you know, the just like it was already going on for the last five years. I would say since 2015. And I don't know if the word woke is permeated into Italian vocabulary. Mm. Oh, okay. So you need to. Could you write in the comments? I don't think we have the time, man. You got to leave in what, 10 to 5 minutes? This is such a big topic. We need a whole other hour. Just a word. In the. Come in, it's fegato. Woke. Ah, okay. Woke. No, no, you haven't seen this one? Not in these terms. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, it's it's take too long to explain it, but it's like um, it's a it's a cultural movement, sort of a phenomenon that has really taken over uh, American culture and also British culture. I don't know how closely you follow what's happening in British culture. I think because we share the language and media can transfer so quickly between you know Britain and America. We share probably more more closer um, like things that happen here are reflected there and and vice versa maybe a little bit more than the rest of Europe, you know. Mm-hmm. But but yeah no I mean it's it's there's there's it's been a hyper focus on race basically that's what you could call it and the seeing racism everywhere looking at every single human interaction you know through the lens of race you know what I mean. Like, for instance, a woke person would look at this video where I say, you know, I, that I want to talk about your Brazilian background. And then you're like, hey, wait, wait, I don't have Brazilian background. And they will find that moment and they will blow it up into, say, everything that they can see in that moment and talk about, you know, racism, you know. And so this is a very, it's a very interesting, it's putting yeah. the mic, it's putting like the microscope lens on racism. You see what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> I really, I don't know how, what, I don't know. For me, just for me, it's not so, um, it's not a big deal about where people come, yeah. where, uh, how, how is, how it looks, li- how these people looks like, looks like, uh, right. but of course I know it, I consider the, the fact that, there, this is a problem. This is a big problem in some areas of the world for some cultures. In Italy, in Italy is it? Because that was my, that's my question. That's my curiosity to know how it is. Because I was in Italy like almost 10 years ago, right? I don't, I don't really, and, it, and the world was a different place. So, such a different place. So, so making, it, making it easily. People are people. There are some clever and good people and some not clever and not good people. And these kinds of, uh, these two types of people cover, cover cover up the entire globe. Clever and non clever? That's that's a fact. And it is. There's nothing to do. So, of course, I what I what I what I want what ah sorry what I want to say with this. Some issues about racism, about about uh, mistreating, uh, about uh, everything about this topic can be and could always be. But of course, in Italy, racism is not a reality as uh, strong and important as in the USA. Right. Yeah. Because it's a totally different uh, world, totally right. different history. And of course, there are some racism here, especially in regards of the immigrants. Mm-hmm. Mm. But... Here's the thing, Marco. Here's what I noticed. 
I don't think that America is more racist than Italy at all. At all. I would, I would fight anybody who will, who will okay. try to say that America is more racist. It's portrayed that way. And what's more racist in America is uh, our obsession with race. And that obsession, uh-huh. that obsession comes as much or more from the people who are, who want to be anti-racist. Hmm. That hyper-focus okay. is coming more than, it, the, the, the thing that's keeping us looking at race, keeping us looking at race, we have to okay. talk about race as always, okay. is more of but the For people. example, what, what I wanted to say, this kind of obsession and also the, the way and the, the fears that you, talk, you are talking about this topic, it's not commonly found here in Italy. The obsession. The racism obsession. is. The racism is. I saw it when I was there. The racism is, but the obsession isn't. Yes, but uh, as I told you in the beginning of this, uh, of this speech, it's, um, it's part of the humanity. There are uh, smart and good people and people who d- don't care about right. being smart. smart. That's it. Yeah, right, of course. I think uh, it's something uh, uh, this is this is bad. This is a, a bad a bad thought. Um, but I think uh, this uh, issue will be unresolvable. What, yeah, racism or the racism on racism coming from people who are anti-racist. Racism. Ra- oh yeah. Well, yeah. I, I I would like to think so. I I hope it will be. It definitely can diminish. I wonder if it will ever go away 100. percent I don't think so, really. Because like you said, there's always going to be stupid people. You know. So I don't know that it's ever going to go away 100. percent But we can aim for making it go away most mostly. But, but what I, so this is, this was a, this was an interesting thing because you asked me about Black Lives Matter a few months ago. And uh, I felt like at that time, I felt my feeling was like, wow, how can I explain to Marco what it means in the context of everything that's going on in American culture right now? Because unless you're in it, unless you're here and you're really, you know, uh, uh, part of all these different conversations and seeing the way that it's being talked about by all these different groups, it, I think it's really hard for people to understand exactly what's going on in American culture right now. It's, there's been some really significant changes for the last five years, really mm-hmm. significant changes. And um, yeah, like, like I said, because I haven't been in Italy for 10 years, I'm like very curious, you know, what is the, the, how, how it looks like from Italy, from that perspective, you know. I don't know, it's, it's, it's definitely... People, people is much, 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 much more easy, right. easier. Yeah. Yes, of course. Well, uh, of course, there are, also, there are people who is part of some uh, can I say, organizations, some collective, uh, some people who is uh, a- activist and of course of course these people is much more into these kind of topics but for the rest of the people in the in the daily in the daily daily life uh, it's not like this yeah Right. That, I can I can feel that I here feel that. here in in Bologna because maybe I mentioned to you Bologna has always been a city well of course the city of university the mm-hmm. first venue of the university in the world all oh, right right city of university of um, initiatives uh, of young people. You keep going Bolo- to these old established art schools, Marco. You keep ending up in these old established. I think you have more. You have more love for the past than you uh, than you realize. <laughs> the past, yeah, the past. But I wanted to say, in, in Bolo- Bologna, always been very a- active in the social uh, movements, uh-huh. cultural movements, right. 
very, very, very active. Right. And uh, in the late, in the last years, um, the, um, the topic of um, feminism, n- new feminism, is raised up very, very strongly. Right. Nowadays, you you can hear much more about feminism and new and new. It's not moment nove presi di presi di posizione come si chiama taking a position taking positions yeah mm-hmm. you know about about uh, women and uh, feminism right that's interesting but uh, racism is not a hot topic not a hot topic yeah that's interesting do you think that do you think that like what i was saying is true that the italian perception of what's happening in america right now is maybe a little like not clear like do you feel like do you feel like you it's what i was describing the situation that i was trying to describe is very obvious to the italians that what's happening in america right now or does it does it from where you guys are looking at us you're like what, what's going on over there americans are acting weird you also know uh, we Italian don't like to don't like to make things complicated. Tell me why you have to go make things so complicated. Uh, Quotations. Um, you you know Ita- Italian people want uh, want to live easy, want uh, want to be easy going. So uh, a common feeling. Uh, and I'm talking about feminism, racism, immigrations, uh, um, homosexuality. A common feeling in the people is, uh, guys, calm down, you're exaggerating. Right, 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 right. Because nowadays you cannot say anything, you cannot do this, you cannot do that, you cannot... Uh, you because that? because not, not just in a, uh, in a bad will of hurting someone, uh, but also in the... In the um, I, I don't know how can I can explain it. Principally, uh, there is uh, so much talking about those kind of uh, topics. And uh, you know, when the topic, when, d- when the debate becomes so big, it's not, it's not anymore a debate. It's just, a, it's, just a, it's just a chit-chatting, yes. It's yeah. just a noisy. Yeah. And then... And then there is also a pack of people who join, who join the, the chatting just for increasing the noise, not just for debating right, with, right. Uh, yes, with uh, considering. Well, that, does happen. that does happen too in Italy. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people said, come on guys, stop. I'm, we, we're fed up of yeah. Because the topic, it's not anymore a topic. It's not anymore a, a social, a social issues, a, something to understand, something to. Um, aha! There's no more aha. To have. <laughs> it's not. It's not about aha. It's not about. Uh, you know, it's not about new. It's not about old. But it's something, something to consider. Something to consider. But in the chit chat, in the noise, this is a problem also for the for the topic itself because the importance of the of the argumentation, um, the logic get 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 missed right. because the because it becomes a chit chat. It yeah. becomes a ah uh, uh, the. Those, those people, again, uh, talking and laming about this, this come on, guys, uh, I, I'm, I'm fed up. I, I don't want to hear you anymore. Yeah. That's it. 
so 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 your advice for america would be like chill the fuck out man just <laughs> <laughs> but i think it's pretty difficult for americans to chill down <laughs> it's impossible we're going to have a war we're going yeah. we're going to be killing each other in a few years <laughs> yeah no i don't know i have no idea it's impossible to predict how things will go you never know you never know i never know. Mm-hmm. i always i mean and i also think people who are get really concerned like i just watch too much news i watch too, i listen i i really need to cut it all out um we tend to imagine the future is very, you know, uh, the future is very dark. It's all, everything bad is going to happen. Nothing good is going to happen. And so that's always happening, right? Well, um, looks like you've, uh, you've mm-hmm. yeah, it. yeah, I gotta go. All right, man. Let's continue it. Yeah, let's, let, let's do this. Should be fun. Should be fun. We can, I wanted, uh, I was really curious to talk more about those, uh, those faces with the, uh, the, like you were saying, the cos, uh, cosmetic, uh, photocosmetic kind of idea here. So that should be fun too. And uh-huh. uh, yeah, a lot more, a lot more I, to talk about. Okay. Thank you for uh, your interview, for your time. Thanks for, thanks for coming. Have a, have a good day and uh, until next time. Ciao for now. Hi, everybody. <laughs> ciao, ciao.